Hello, and welcome you all for the second edition of the web series that we have uh, initiated on the Espohana product overview. So in this series, uh, we are mostly going to concentrate on the Espohana as a product. You know, what are the various flavors of it, the application flavors like the cloud flavor, the on-premise flavors, what could be the licensing and all that. Apart from that, the possible deployment options and uh, also around the uh, uh, path. You know, if you are on a current ECG version, uh, what are the steps or checks that we need to have, you know, whether we are ready for S4HANA or not that. So let's get started maybe, you know, as I keep moving along. Uh, so like I mentioned, first let's discuss about the product and uh, the flavors and options. So here, this slide, uh, you know, try to capture the entire gamut of the product, the license, the possible infrastructure, and the possible deployment options that all we can get. At the top, you can notice the on-premise and the cloud flavors of applications, yeah? So what it is, so all, everything in the blue that you could see is all about on-premise application and Everything that you see on the red to the right is the application cloud. And these are the various parameters that you see to the extreme left in a mustard or a gold color. So now coming to on-premise, what is defined as an on-premise? First is the licensing. Okay, if you take licensing as an aspect, very first classification is that when I buy my license, a named user license from SAP on a perpetual model or in an industry word, BYOL, bring your own license. This is called an on-premise application, all right? Or if it's an application cloud, s cloud, I buy it on a subscription basis per user or as a completely purely software as a service model. So which I would take and pay per user for the type of uh, functionality that is using, I pay on a year-on-year -year basis, all right? So this is the first and fundamental point is the license. So how the licensing of the product is done. The second aspect is the product itself. What is the product called or the marketing name of the product? Would be SAP S4HANA. So it, until uh, I think uh, August, this would, was called, even today as we speak, is called S4HANA 1610OP, right? On premise. But yes, in very near future, we would have SAP S4HANA 1709 OP on premise. So that's the product. And in the cloud, we have SAP S4HANA 1709. And, and, and as you could see further down below, every quarter there is a new uh, version of the cloud released. All right. So, so these are the two main from a product or a marketing uh, name of the products. Uh, as far as it's concerned from a product standpoint. Now, AMC. So when I buy a perpetual license product from SAP, I would have an annual maintenance that I need to pay for, say, for example, currently it stands at 22% uh, per year on the overall license price that I purchase, 22% 20, every year that I have to pay. Coming to an application cloud on this, when you go for an Espohana cloud, you wouldn't have any AMC at all because you pay subscription every year. Clear? I hope uh, till now it's clear. So now when we come to the infrastructure, okay, we bought the product, uh, we bought the license basically. So now where do I use it or how is it deployed or how is it available for me? So now when I go to a cloud aspect, let's start with the cloud first. When I buy a cloud again, when I subdivide the cloud into two, there is a public cloud and there is a private cloud. So both private cloud and public cloud, the entire infrastructure and the application, everything as a pure SA software as a service is provided by SAP. Only different is public cloud is a much more closed application, right? It is very, very minimal. It's a baseline uh, for a, a very small organization with not much of complexity. They would pay, there would be a lot of best practice adoption or a standard adoption and, uh, and, and with the quarterly release cycle, if you see that, the uh, there are is solutions there is no uh, support for industry solutions uh, when i say limited if you see in that we call it limited because currently Esfohana public cloud supports professional services as an industry solution but there are no other solutions available 
even within that the customizations are not possible there is only any changes or any configurations to be done it is done via expert configuration mode where uh, even a partner wouldn't be able to do much and sometimes for most of the configurations they need to take help from sap so any any customizations or anything or any we have to make use of building our own apps around using the api extensions where the api is there so we build our own app or any application around those api extension and releases are every quarter we get a new release so we have to be wary of okay what releases do we like to adopt and what releases we don't want to adopt say for example if we if we, if we adopt a if update in the quarter it might write down some of my api extensions that i may have used so those are some of the things as uh, as a user or as a customer you should be wary of and availability in the regions uh, currently you need to check with your local sap account manager or partner whether public cloud is available in your region in the us it's available uh, for the professional services as well or for the baseline as well but other regions you need to contact and check with your uh, local account manager so that's in short about the public cloud now coming to private cloud even private cloud completely provided by sap but you would have your own private tenant so so what does it mean so you could definitely it's obviously the, the per year subscription charges are higher compared to a public cloud subscription so if you put a rough factor it could be around say 80% more i mean 101.8x per year as you could see or even it could be more depending on the market you are operating and you know depending on other things lot of factors around it maybe for a rough scale you can take double the private cloud uh, you know private cloud would be double the public cloud subscription charges coming to the is solutions it has complete support for all the industry solutions you can do all your customizations on the tenant releases are annual uh, like you would have it for the on premise and it's available in all regions and countries maybe the data center part you need to check with sap on which region it is available but that is something technically it is available in all regions and all countries so that's in short about the application cloud okay uh, then coming back to the on premise here so when we come back to the infrastructure standpoint like we said for the public and private clouds of uh, espohana sap anyway would be providing that as bundled with the uh, subscription whereas coming to the on premise the license is owned by us so definitely we need to have our own arrangements for the hardware so what are the possible infrastructures we having our own hardware meaning we invest uh, in a capex model and buy the complete hardware ourselves or i go with a pure play infrastructure infrastructure cloud or infrastructure as a service uh, which we could take wherein we give the specification you know you where you could give the specification to your partner uh, so who would provide you the complete uh, requirements in the cloud so what are some of the examples that you could have is sap's own uh, hcc hana enterprise cloud is an example of that and you also have amazon aws or you would have hold of other uh, data centers which are actually our companies which are providing the infrastructure on the cloud so pure play complete opex model for the infrastructure and in cases where you buy your own hardware you choose to buy your own hardware again there is completely where you deploy it in your in house data center or the midway option would be that you go for a co location option which means that you own the hardware but you put it in a data center third party data center for them to manage your hardware so there is an incremental cost small cost of an operation you know for, for an operational expense so where you could clearly see the capex model completely if you own the hardware and host it in house it's a capex plus a small mix of opex if you own the hardware and co located or it's a pure play opex completely for the infrastructure cloud now coming to the is solutions whether you deploy it on your own hardware in house or on a co located place or in the infrastructure cloud all is solutions are supported there is no virtually no difference in terms of the customization that you would like to do and releases uh, coinciding with the private cloud even the releases are annual uh, releases say every new improvement uh, the core of all the applications across all the columns that we have seen is the same only thing is that the lo the elements to which sap lets you touch the code is different in a public cloud they absolutely don't let you touch the uh, code but there is a quarterly release cycle where updates happen on the public cloud all those updates are bundled together and at the end of a year 
you would have annual version released for the private cloud as well as for the on premise uh, uh, application so now availability standpoint yes on premise is available in all regions and countries so this in terms of the product the license infrastructure and the deployment options now say currently there are few questions i might have in terms of migration say i have on premise ecc can i go to cloud espohana cloud no not possible because that's absolutely not possible option you would have is you can reimplement you do a fresh implementation so ecc existing ecc system becomes a legacy system so there is no path straight out migration possible but i understand you can check with your local sap that you can surrender your uh, existing license and you would possibly get a discount for the subscription but that's complete disclaimer you need to talk to your local sap uh, account manager or partner right but from a technology technical standpoint it is just not possible for you to migrate any of your on premise application to the cloud uh, application ecc or whatever you know even soh so it cannot go to application cloud and now coming to the cloud versions suppose today i invest on a private cloud in the future can i go to a public cloud no not possible vice versa if i today go with a public cloud tomorrow my needs are uh, increasing you know i might need a is solution or more customization can i migrate from public cloud to private cloud no not possible so the migration paths are not available in such instance so this is in short about the complete overview on the product license infrastructure deployment and also migration possibilities between cloud and uh, on premise but what is possible today i have my complete hardware in house so i can move all the hardware you know i i want to deploy the hardware uh, on site yes that's possible uh, or today my ecc hardware is hosted in house but i want to take a complete uh, espo hana ha hardware the hana hardware on the infrastructure uh, on the cloud can i migrate yes you can migrate from your on premise ecc to an espo hana hosted on the infrastructure cloud certainly that migration is possible from own hardware to infra so going to the next slide uh, these are the uh, various paths i think even in our earlier series we have discussed on this at length say in from my current ecc what are the possible options for me to shift to a hana platform so one is uh, sweet on hana it has its own path with classic functionality hp8 running on uh, hana database it's pure play database upgrade so there's not much of innovations that's going to happen on that but it is available and supported again until only 2025 like i mentioned in my last series then in the espo hana with the finance add on yes that is also possible for you to move wherein only you want to take the finance um, migration but considering options that you still need to go with a migration it is always recommended for you to go with espo hana core because that is the complete uh, innovative solution always innovations are on track with so many pure app being released almost on a weekly or a daily basis if i have, uh, have to say then it has all the comprehensive scope for the complete country and is solutions everything being brought into the core so deployment options so okay we spoke about deployment options but here what this slide i am trying to talk about is like i spoke again this slide also is possibly familiar with uh, people who have seen the last series is that when i want certain hardware i would like to own and host it in house or uh, you know for example my dr my primary i would like to keep in house and i want to put my dr on the cloud completely or i want to put my non productive systems in house and put my productive systems in cloud so multiple options are possible for you that you know you could choose to either have a mix and match which is within your infrastructure as well so part in house and part uh, in the cloud so now okay what is my let's go to the next slide wherein we are going to see uh, my current sap version to swohana okay so today we talked about ecc6 ehp8 okay or ecc6 ehp base version whatever it is it's fine but so moving forward let's see this is a simple flow chart uh, you know i tried to depict here for you to understand at a very high level of course there will be nitty gritties on the specific patch levels what would be the steps involved you know maybe your current os level might 
uh, require you to even first do an OS migration even before you 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 you, you do you know uh, the the SOHANA or possible the current database might have to be upgraded before you go to the next level. So the French start the first check you always need to ask is that is my SAP uh, below ECC 6.0 or if ECC 6.0 or above. If it is above ECC 6.0, good, then straight. Okay, you see whether next check you'll have to do is whether you are already on new GL or not on new GL. All right, maybe in the past, if you have been in an older version and you would have migrated to ECC 6 in the past, there is a high chance that you would not have had new GL in your system. Maybe you could check with your business or your partner and understand that. So, so if, if new GL is also there, well, very good. Uh, our our job is uh, more or less done. So next check possibly you'll have to do is see if there are any add-ons. So while technically you can do an upgrade, uh, direct, um, a conversion directly from uh, ECC 6.0 with NewGL activated, you could do an SOHANA conversion to your system. Prerequisites are done that yes, you have a path to go to SOHANA conversion, but checks that you need to do is about the add-ons that you have, any add-ons. So you need to specifically, your partner would be able to help you. Uh, for example, somebody might have an ACL add-on. So you need to see whether that is supported or what is required to be done. There would be specific notes for that. So maybe those precautions have to be taken before going for SOHANA conversion. Or if you if you if you have an IS solution, say like IS utilities or IS retail, so what is it check whether it's fully compatible? So what is there? Or any other compatible products that you have, you need to do those checks and you're ready to go with SVP SOHANA. Now let's see the other part. If you happen to be on a lower version than ECC 6.0, then the first check definitely you have to do is an upgrade to SAP ECC 6.0. Or you also check because it's highly unlikely that new GL is anyway not there for you. So first thing you also have to do is that new GL migration, whether as a business you want to take up a new GL migration because that is a big project in itself. So temporarily say your uh, Compulsion is that you have to ship the hardware, you want to do a platform migration, but new gel is coming in the way. Maybe you might want to decide to do a quick platform upgrade where you want to do a DB upgrade to HANA. Yes, certainly that is possible with the old GL, it's a classic GL, you could still go ahead and do a SOH suite on HANA migration. Okay, so if you want to do, do that. If you choose, no, I don't want to do it, but still I don't want to do a new GL migration. I'm on still 4.7c, for example, or something like that, and I would that the only option available for you is that re-implement SOHANA. So treat the old system as a legacy. Go ahead, re-implement SOHANA. That's possibly the best choice because you're avoiding uh, the ECC upgrade also and also the new GL migration project. But if you insist, uh, you know, you definitely have to do a new GL migration project. And then once the new GL migration project is over, which again has its own um, uh, prerequisites that you can only do after a year and you know once a year, fiscal year end is over that's when you can actually time it you'll have to time it time your projects in such a way that you finish your new gel migration at an year end and then do a SVPS Ohana conversion so this path would more or less give you at a high level the 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 indications on uh, you know where you stand and possible step what you could do but for a detailed in-depth analysis definitely you'll have to touch base with your partners Right. So with this, uh, the we are coming to the end. We have come to the end of the uh, second edition of the web series. Right. So be in touch for the next edition. Thank you.